Hi guys, welcome to a question of Deferra Sport. This is episode six. Here we have Katie Long. Katie's an ex-England hockey player, has many international honours, including a bronze at a World Cup in 2010. But most importantly for you guys, she's an ex Deferra student. So, Katie, talk to us about your journey in hockey and from the, those days in year seven, when you started the Ferris all the way to where you are now. Yeah, it's quite an interesting one, actually, for me. The, the first real experience I got of hockey was on the Dove playing fields at a lunchtime hockey club uh, run by Miss Jeffrey. So that was my first introduction to hockey. And if I'm completely honest, I absolutely hated the sport. My sister was in the year above me at school, so naturally as the younger sister, I did whatever she did. I just followed through and she was quite sporty as well. So she did hockey. So I went to this hockey practice with the black rubber hockey boots on. And I was like, what is this? I was already into football and, and I was already into athletics. Um, so I had a go, didn't like it. And then I got pestered to go back uh, by my PE teachers. And then by the end of year seven, I realised actually it was quite fun and that I could use my skills in other sports and, and transfer that across to hockey a little bit. So it started on the Dove grass playing fields. Uh, we had the inter-school fixtures down at Shobnall. So then I got to experience what an Astro was like. And then for me, that was a game changer for the game. It became a much easier version of the game on the Astro than it was on the grass. Um, from there, I progressed through. I joined a local hockey club, I joined Barton Hockey Club. Um, and then from there, I went through the county system, um, the regional system, and then was fortunate enough to get, get selected for the England under 18s. And, and I guess that was where my international um, opportunities really kicked on from. So, yeah, the Dove, the Dove Fields were where it all started for me. That's amazing, obviously, to see the progression from the Dove Fields, shall we say, all the way up to England Honours. And obviously, we're going to talk about England Honours later on. Um, so was it just that you were pestered into hockey, hockey, hockey with your PE teacher? Or was it that you actually found a natural talent that you got there? Uh, well, even I think I guess moving back from to when I was at primary school, I was always known as the sporty kid. Uh, I was the the girl that played football with the boys at break time, the girl that was desperate to be on the boys' football team. Just any kind of sport, uh, I'd throw myself into and, and have a go at. So that was kind of from from primary school level, and then moving up to secondary school, I just had a go at everything. Uh, and again, just uh, I was just the, the sporty kid in the year. Um, so. I think I, I naturally enjoy playing sports. So outside of school, every night after school, I go and play football down the road with my mates up the road, like anything and everything to do with sport. Massive Manchester United fan. Um, so I spent a lot of time, uh, luckily enough to go and watch a few matches here and there. And, and just playing football was one of my real loves as a, as a kid. Um, but the opportunities that I got through hockey uh, were able to allow me to progress further uh, within hockey. Oh, cool. It's great that you've obviously been able to grab those opportunities and go further with that. When did you realise at what point do you think, you know, what I could be an elite level hockey player or I can get into that England squad? I don't know. I, I, when did I realise? I, I probably never did. I honestly probably never actually did realise that I, I could do it. I always knew that I was quite good at sports. I never thought that I was exceptional. And, and even when I was going through the county and the regional side, I was more of an athlete that ran with a hockey stick, uh, if, if I'm brutally honest. And that's probably still the same for me now, the, the qualities that I have as a player. I'm not one of these players that, that will run around and skill everybody 10 times over. I'll use what I've got and what I fortunately do have is a bit of pace. So I, I utilise my athletic speed into the sports that I played. Um, and yeah, I guess once you get a chance to sniff at junior England, then you start to think, oh, this, this is something I'm on the radar. So... Um, I, I got into the junior under 18s in my final year at under 18s. Um, a lot of other people had, had got in at the under 16s, so I'd already had two, three years experience. I, I realistically didn't really introduce myself to the sport till year seven, didn't really like it at the start. And then probably from year eight onwards was when I started to really focus a little bit more on hockey. Um, and yeah, I guess the, the England under 18s was perhaps the, the, the point of, oh, OK, this could be something that I could do further on. Perfect. That's really nice to hear. Um, who was your or what was your inspiration? Can you just expand on that for obviously whether it's hockey, whether it was a person in football and where that took you? Yeah, I mean, it was my first my first sporting love was football and David Beckham, just absolute idol. Like my bedroom was full of David Beckham, everything like for me as a, as a footballer, as a Man United fan. Uh, he he really was my idol in the way that he could play, the way he, I used to watch all the documentaries, the way he did extra training, just the way he was an absolute professional in, in being the best footballer 
that he could be. But in terms of for me personally and my sporting journey, it was actually Miss Jeffrey at DeFerris, who was my my PE teacher at the time, who really supported me with with my found passion for hockey. Obviously, I didn't find the love for it at the start. Uh, but through her continued support and encouragement, to, she almost saw that I perhaps could transfer these skills that I had to hockey. Uh, fortunately for me, she liked hockey. Uh, so she was able to support that and push that. And, and I still remember back in year seven, her taking me and a few of the other girls to a county hockey trial on a Friday. So she took us all there, uh, gave us that opportunity to, to be part of that and, and experience that. And, and I'll never forget those, those moments where the support of your PE teacher really pushed you on and encouraged you and, and, and the belief that they have in you to give you those chances uh, was, was really, really important. So it stems back to, I think, to a, a lot of her input from, from when I was a pupil at DeFerris and then once I went into the hockey world, um, I joined I joined a different club, Sutton Coalfield, and and Jane Sixsmith was a player there, and and uh, she was a, a, a player who had been in the England and Great Britain setup. She'd been to an Olympic Games, um, and to get to train with her as a you know as a 15, 16 year old was absolutely fantastic, and and she really took some of his younger players under her wing, and and really nurtured us and supported us, and um, and really helped us to develop. So a combination of, of a few people. That's brilliant. Obviously, it's great that PE teachers do have such a role because I know we, we like to try and think we have the role of nurturing talent and obviously it has come to fruition with yourself. So congratulations on both parts. When you were training with the England setup, how many hours and what types of training did you have to do? Obviously, because it, it's not a professional sport. So obviously you're juggling. So what did you have to do? Yeah, I was really fortunate. So when I um, when I left school, I went to university, and then when I finished university, I got um, selected on one of the as one of the funded spots for the the centralised program, which was based down at Bisham Abbey down uh, down in Marlow, um, and it was the first time um, with the funding towards London 2012 that there was an elite training program that was full time for hockey. So prior to that, it was all based around camp formats, so weekend training, uh, tournaments here and there. So it was very much still have your other job, have your other life and fit training in here and there. But I was fortunate enough to, to go on to this full time programme. So um, our, our programme, as I said, was based at, at Bisham Abbey, where we we basically trained all of the time together as a squad of 32. Um, so I'll, I mean, trying to, to look back now a few years ago, but, you know, we, we would have... Um, each day of the week would be doing some form of training, be it pitch sessions, uh, be it technical sessions, be it SNC sessions, be it psychology, nutrition, uh, video analysis, whatever it was, everything was there and your week was, was scheduled out. They, they obviously made sure that there was enough of a balance that you weren't just train, 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 train. You need to make sure you have that, that rest time and that recovery in there. Um, but for a, for a young player coming into a senior squad, it was really exciting to, to be like, oh, it's hockey and it's training every day. This is this is great. This is what all sports people want to do. It's like living your dream every day, waking up thinking, oh, I get to play hockey today. And just not, I suppose, thinking about it, having it planned there. I suppose that was the first time that hockey did start to sort of take off, didn't it? Because it was very much under the radar pre-2010, 2012 sort of times. Um, so just touching on, your hockey journey what was your favorite or most memorable moment within hockey uh i think in internationally uh it has to be uh the world cup uh the world cup in 2010 um was over in argentina and and for those that don't know hockey in argentina is like for women like the biggest sport and i know that the footballers amongst you you're Lionel messi's he's the pinup boy there was a, a lady called luciana amar and she was the equivalent female um, with, within hockey and, and a role model for, for, for everybody over in Argentina. You know, so much so that you look at shop windows and, and she's the one in the sports shop window. And, and for us hockey players from, from England and Great Britain, it was like, oh, really? You know, hockey's very, you know, not one of the major sports um, pu public-wise um, uh, and within the media. So it was a bit of a, a shock to us to quite see how big hockey was. Um, but at that World Cup, uh, we were we were able to to win a bronze medal, which which almost was the first medal that that pushed on this success that the that the Great Britain and England hockey teams have had over over the last ten years or so. So I think for me, probably the most memorable moment was winning that bronze medal um, in Argentina um, and getting to play in a in a match against Argentina in Argentina in the hometown of Luciana Amar, um, where 
every time she touched the ball, you just couldn't hear a thing. There was 12 to 14,000 people watching, again, completely unbeknown to, to hockey in the UK of, of that number of crowds. So I think internationally wise, definitely that. Um, but then on a, on a more domestic club level, um, you've got such less pressure on you at that side. It's far more, um, although you're out there to win, it, it's more you're playing with your mates and, and that camaraderie that you have on a domestic level. Um, and a couple of seasons ago, we, with my club team, Leicester, we were fortunate enough to get to the final um, of the indoor competition at the Copper Box. So it was at the Olympic Stadium, um, at the Copper Box, at the Olympic Park. Um, and although we didn't win, uh, we, we came second, we won our semi-final um, and, and we had a really, really fantastic time. And, and again, being part of that legacy of the Olympics and using those facilities uh, was really, really good fun. Well, obviously you mentioned playing in front of thousands of people. How did you cope with the pressure and nerves, obviously, before the game and during that game when it was completely different to how you had, obviously, previously? Yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah, it was an experience that we weren't used to. Um, but you, at the end of the day, it's just hockey. You, you're still playing hockey and there's there's a bit more crowd. And I guess the difference was you almost knew that they, they almost weren't looking at you. They were just wanting to look at their own player. So I guess the, the pressure as such was, was on them. Um, I guess in the, in those scenarios, but yeah, it was something that was was completely different. Um, but I'm really glad that I got the opportunity to to play in front of, you know, such a such a vocal and, and large crowd because it it didn't happen back then over here. But I know since then that the the interest in hockey has really spiraled, which is brilliant. And we've got the the Lee Valley Hockey Centre as well, which uh, enables a greater uh, regular access to, to to larger crowds. So hopefully, it's all going in the right direction and give more people that chance to experience. Uh, what it's like to play in front of a crowd. That's brilliant. Um, now, obviously, touched on your highs. Now, we talk about lows. So, what was your biggest disappointment or biggest low? And how did you feel at that time? And how did you overcome that low? Yeah, um, I think before we come to the international side, because that's probably where where the biggest low comes. It even before that, just um, I remember going to the county trials and and I got into the under thirteen team, but it was the B team, and I remember secretly being a bit bit disappointed I wanted to be in the A team and and then that step to try and get into the regional Midlands team and and not making it in the first year and really wanted my name to be on the list so there are quite a few earlier disappointments that perhaps weren't as big that that enabled you to experience what it was like to perhaps not get what you wanted and and how you could overcome that and, and keep working hard but I guess the biggest disappointment for me was was how my international uh, career finished as such and I've been training all through to the London 2012 Olympics and, and I knew that only 16 of the 32 of us were going to get selected. And, and I was pretty honest with myself and knew that my chances, you know, weren't probably going to be the best chances. Um, so not getting selected for, for London was, was really, really difficult. And then not being asked to return to the Rio programme, um, which I thought I would have, um, really was a kick in the teeth for me. And and I guess it gave me the opportunity to reassess where I was in my life and, and where I wanted to take my sport. And um, I then chose the, the decision to, to focus on my career. Um, and as inspired by Miss Jeffrey, I've now become a PE teacher myself. That's fantastic. And obviously what you've shown there is obviously perseverance, sort of early setbacks have almost just made sure you've worked harder and harder and harder throughout. So it's an amazing message for our students to take from that that even if you have one setback or two setbacks or three, those that keep going usually succeed later on. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. And, and I'll be the first to admit as a hockey player, I, I, as I said before, I, I'm not the most skillful. I'm not the most technical. I, I used what I had physically to help. But I think what if I look back now to a number of the youngsters who did make the county team and did make the regional team and did make the junior England team back back then when I was a youngster, a lot of them just fell off the wagon and, and I never saw them in the senior side yet. I was the one that just would secretly be working hard. Uh, I'd be working on my fitness and, and I almost, yeah, I was able to, to mentally um, pick myself back up and, and just keep going. And, and I think it's, it's really important that, that you realise it's not all about just being the fancy player that can do all this and all that at a young age. If you've not had disappointments and you've not had to work for something, then I think, you know, you're almost at a disadvantage. You need to have those setbacks. You need to have those disappointments. One, to make you realise how much you want it, but two, to enable you to, to cope and be able to understand, OK, I haven't got what I've wanted. That's all right. I'll go and reassess and I'll work harder and come back again next time. It's just having that appetite, isn't it? It's seeing how much you've got 
in the locker and how much you can cope with having a setback. Brilliant. So you touched on earlier about you still play now, a uh, good level. Uh, who do you play for and what sort of level is that? Yeah, so I play for Leicester City Hockey Club and we play in the National League Division 1. Um, so, yeah, I, I started off at Barton Hockey Club. So for any budding youngsters, uh, there's, there's Barton Hockey. Obviously, there's Burton Hockey Club um, as well in the area. So a good couple of hockey clubs um, that you can get involved uh, involved with there. Once I played for a few years and, and I needed to go and spread my wings and, and get a little bit exposure at a higher level, then I, I moved to Sutton Coalfield, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and then when I was at university, I had to make the decision, am I going to play for the university team or am I going to play for a, an actual club team? And, and I... Um, I chose to play for the club team. Um, I really believed in, in the coach, the coaches that were there. And also at Leicester at the time, it was full and littered with GB and England internationals. Um, so for me to learn from them um, as a junior player uh, was why I made that decision. And, and then here I am still, still at Leicester all those years on now, hoping to, to help nurture the youngsters that come through our door and, and help them to achieve what they want to with their hockey. That's amazing. I'm just going to touch on the longevity that you've been fortunate enough to have within the game of hockey. How have you been able to sustain that level of elite sport throughout your sort of 10, 12 years that you've been playing now? I think, I think a lot of people, we talk about the, should you specialise early? Should you do a range of sports? What's the right answer? And, and I think for me, because I didn't throw everything into hockey from when I was six years old, I didn't even know what hockey was pretty much until I started secondary school. It, I don't feel like I ever burnt out by doing too much too soon. Uh, so I think that's that's probably played into my hands uh, within hockey that it was still relatively fresh, whereas maybe for other people that have played a bit longer, maybe they'd lost that buzz about it um, a little bit. So I don't know if that, that has had an impact. Um, but obviously being part of a, of a full-time training programme, uh, you train all week um, with, your, with, your, with your Great Britain squad and your England squad. And then on the weekend, it was you get loose to go and play for your club. So you'd be playing against all of those people that you'd been playing uh, training within the week. So there'd be that um, that that competitive element. Um, but I think, you know, it's for me, I, I still enjoy it. And, and I don't enjoy every session and I don't enjoy every game. And I don't always love hockey. But when I actually assess it on the whole, I do really enjoy it and be at the physical side of, of testing myself, but also the social side and being part of a team and and being accountable as a member of your team, um, they're the, the bits that I take from hockey that, that I really enjoy. That's fantastic. Obviously, it's brilliant that you've been able to sustain the sort of elitism for the period that you have. Now, you touched on field hockey, obviously on Astro, on playing on indoor hockey. Which do you prefer and why? Oh, if you'd have asked me this question when I first started playing indoor hockey, I would have said uh, definitely field hockey. Um, the rules and regulations of indoor hockey uh, are very different to outdoor. Things like not being able to lift the ball, which was something that I like to do in the game. So I at first found the indoor game a real challenge. Um, didn't suit my skill set. I like to have a lot of space that I could run, use my speed. And then all of a sudden I'm on this tiny little pitch that requires the more finesse. So initially I didn't enjoy it as much, although I enjoyed the weekends and enjoyed the, the, the playing, the actual individually Oh, have I contributed to the team? Mm, perhaps not so much. Uh, but then I've played it since I was 17, 18, and I've played every single year since. And you do get better at it. Um, and I do really enjoy the, the fast nature of it. Uh, it's a bit more end to end. Um, but I think probably the outdoor game suits my game better. Um, so I'd probably say I, would, I do prefer the outdoor. Perfect. A um, couple of questions now on fitness levels. And you mentioned sort of your components of fitness. It's obviously been strength of speed. So when did you find that you were quicker than everybody else? And is there some, that's something that you work on on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis? Um, yeah, I guess, when did I know I was quite quick? I guess at primary school sports day, um, when, uh, when yeah, I, I'd say to my, to my mum, can I, can I wear my trainers, not the pumps? Because I run faster in the trainers than I would in the, in the, in the PE pumps. Um, but yeah, I think from primary school, I'd, I perhaps saw against my peers that, that I was a little bit quicker. Um, I've got a, a funny little story that, that I've said a few times to different people, but with my sister being the year above, um, there was one year where I was still at primary school and, and she was at secondary school. And, and I remember I, I didn't just do sprint work. I, I just liked running, just liked exercising. And um, a few times a week, I, I'd ask my mum when she picked me up, could you bring my trainers and shorts and t-shirt? And while you drive off to go and get my sister from Deferra's, I'll, I'll run. Um, 
So that was from when I was in year six at primary school. And, and I look back now and I think so many people must have thought, what, what a horrible mum she is making her child run from that school to that school. But it was something that I just wanted to do. And, and you know, running around the block at home, it's what I wanted to do um, when I was younger. So I think I've always had a bit of that training ethic of wanting to do. I joined athletics clubs, joined football clubs. Um, so... I think it, it was instilled from a young age. And then obviously once you, you get onto a, an elite pathway, be it a junior pathway um, or a senior pathway, then the access you get to strength and conditioning is huge. Um, and, and then it becomes very uh, scientific and technical and you get training programs that are, that are tailored to you. So in terms of maintaining that at, at an elite level, a lot of that is, is kind of planned for you. Um, and, and you just follow, follow the programs that are in place to, to make you the best you can be. Fantastic. And how have you kept up your fitness level during lockdown? Because I know it's very difficult, as you just said, you're a PE teacher um, and hockey player. And obviously that's all sort of changed at this moment in time. Yeah, I mean, back back in March when, when it first started, um, our season had pretty much just finished. Uh, we were one game short of completing the season. Um, and obviously weather was a bit nicer back then as well. So it was easier to go out and you know, I started doing quite a lot of 5k runs and uh, you know, one of the main motivators was, a, was a, a group of us from school. We did like a little 5K leaderboard. So we try and just see whether we could improve our 5K time each week. So a number of different challenges that we'd done there. Uh, but I also discovered um, I, I did a bit of Pilates, which I had never done before. Um, I'd never, if I'm hands up on this, wasn't great at the flexibility side, um, that, that area. So I found that a real, real challenge and something that I'm really glad that I discovered in lockdown because I don't think I would have really thrown myself into it um, before. Um, so in the summer, it was much easier. Um, obviously, since since the weather's turned, it you know, it has had an impact on, on my motivation. And, and it's just setting yourself small challenges and, and more realistic challenges of of what it is that you're wanting to achieve. And, and with my club, we still have, you know, the team social groups going, the team workouts and things. So being a member of a team really does help you in these times to to do things together and, and know that you're doing it for a common good. Perfect. And what are your goals for this year within hockey in particular? Have you got any goals, aspirations? Yeah, it's a really tough one because we, we don't know what's happening. You know, I, I haven't played a competitive game of hockey since October because the league finished, the indoor season was scrapped. Um, we, we don't know. So it's, it, I guess it's it's hard to to know what what the goals are when we we don't know what the reality is of of being able to play but you know my goals that have been recently are, are to to be as successful as I can be within within my club team um, and to support those players that that are there around me so a little bit more of a focus on helping the junior players you know I, I've had my time of of playing at the top level and and trying to help support the the juniors coming through is something that 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 I I like to take a bit of personal you know care in, in trying to ensure that they get as much out as they can from from our training perfect so almost like giving back from what you've had and what you've absorbed over the last 15 20 years yeah i mean i re i really appreciated it as a kid you know coming into a, a a bigger club playing at a level that i'd not been exposed to before and and being scared of oh, i don't want to make a mistake and um and just having a senior player who's that bit older and a bit more experienced to be able to to be like it's all right you know it's okay and, and talk you through it a little bit it, it really helped me so you know if I can help somebody else on the way then then that would be great that's brilliant and just obviously just to round it up there if pupils are watching this and interested in hockey what would you recommend that they do with that um so if you're interested in hockey and hopefully you, you know you might have had some exposure and access to it at school um is to definitely get involved in a club obviously the club route that I chose I, I went with Barton Hockey Club and had a fantastic few years there uh, me and my sister playing there with a lot of youngsters but also a lot of adults who were able to help you learn the game and understand it a little bit more so definitely get yourself involved in a club um, and just see where that takes you and you know the main thing and i know everyone says it is is to enjoy it but there will be times when when you don't when it is chucking it down freezing cold you can't feel your stick and it's a bit miserable but then you live for those times as well where you go and you just have a real good time or you you train really well or you play really well or you know you have a really really positive experience and and for me that's a lot of what what sport brings is that positivity perfect thank you very much and that is episode six of a question of the fair sport with myself mr Arnold, and Katie Long. Thank you very much for your time, Katie. That was really, really insightful. Yeah, no worries at all. Thanks.